Well, hey, good morning. It's really good to see you today. It's Wednesday, the 28th of July, and rapidly getting to the end of July. Um, Friday's the last, no, not Friday, Saturday. Gosh, 30 days have September, April, June, and November. We're in July, aren't we? 31 in July. Ah. Anyway, um, wedding on Friday, Emma and Ben. Wow, looking forward to it. Getting all ready, sorted for that. Rehearsal tonight. And they're decorating the church. So please continue to pray for this lovely young couple as they begin their new life together. Looking outside, it's not looking that fantastic today. This is what they said would happen. We've had a brilliant summer so far, haven't we? I've just been in, lived, been living in my shorts. It's been warm. It's been war and it's been dry. Praise God, just the weather I like. So anyway, we're looking today at a devotion. We've clicked over to chapter three. And uh, I'm going to do verses one and two together here because uh, I think they're pretty much saying the same thing, and it gives me something to say on these ones here. So, um, so I'm just kind of going to give you some thoughts from today, really, for, from these this, this these scriptures. And it's called the this the title says the law and faith in Christ, and this is what this is what Paul writes. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made clear to you um, as if you'd seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. So Paul is saying here, he's, uh, he's confronting this, he's dealing with this, this heresy, if you like, this this this. this group of believers or so-called believers have come in they call them judaizers they've come into the church worm their way in gained prominent and basically said you know this was the big argument then was to be a christian you need to be jewish so men need to be circumcised we need to follow all aspects of the law of moses and paul's saying actually this is not right because you know even the israelites they couldn't live according to the law because the law condemns. The law shows us our need of Christ. The law reveals to us our sinful nature. And for me, um, so the meaning of the, the Jesus Christ's death was made clear to, clear to us if we painted a picture um, of his death on the cross. And um, now we're for, fortunate. You can see, you can kind of get those ideas of things with TV programs and stuff and paintings and everything. Where we see, but Paul's painting this as saying it was very, very clear that this was this was portrayed. This was important, and um, this is important. I mean, there's two things here really. You know, if we go back to living under under the law, we will be judged by every aspect of the law, and to me, it's very much, it's very much a performance based thing. It's about if I can really, if I can measure, if I, if me, 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 if I, I will do this, if I have the right attitude, I, da, 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 me, 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 me. It's based around me doing it. And, you know, the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And it's, it's the focus is on me. Me. Being the best, I'll be a better version of me. And when I fail, okay, I need to do whatever I need to do. Under the law of grace, the law of grace, under grace, we say, hey, do you know what? I recognise I'm a sinner. Uh, I can't do this on my own. I recognise this is my, you know, the, the result of my sin is because of my sinful nature. But Jesus Pay the price for that on the cross. And he made me, guess what? A new creation. Gives us a new nature. Jesus, it does. Jesus himself comes to live within us to give us that help and that strength. God doesn't leave us as orphans. And not only that, Paul, and this is what Paul says, did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Absolutely not. Because under the law of Moses, the Holy Spirit was given to a handful of people. For a particular time, for a particular purpose, under grace, when when Jesus said, "I'm going and I'll bring and, and you go to Jerusalem, boys, you wait for the Comforter," the Holy Spirit was given to 
each and every one of us. I believe that when we are we become a Christian, we have a, we receive a measure of the of, being, of the Holy Spirit because God comes to live within us Himself. But then we receive, you know, uh, <coughs> subsequently we can receive the bapt. The Bible calls it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. But to be full, full, and full of the Holy Spirit, and this. So we get our forgiveness through the grace, through the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross. And the how we live our lives is through the power of the Holy Spirit living through us. And so it's not it's not through me. Yes, I need to determine to say, OK, Lord, I want you. I want you in my life. I want to live my life according to because because I have that, still have that free choice. Paul says, you know, the good things I want to do, I don't do sometimes. The bad things I don't want to do, they're the very things I end up doing. So he talks about this battle, but with the Holy Spirit in us, you know. And God also tells us this: He said, when you, when we face temptation and difficulties, He will not put us through anything that we could not face. So we have the we have the means within us with the Holy Spirit. We have the means within us. To really say no, no to sin, no to making wrong decisions, no to those things. Sometimes we don't because we're still in the world and we're still of the world. But we're called to be in the world, but not of the world. Living according to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this. I think Jesus said this. The Holy Spirit will be your teacher. Let the Holy Spirit be your teacher today. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Don't be like the Galatians who kind of went back into law. Christians, once you've been around a lot, you know, a long time, we can easily get back into into law. I remember there was a situation in the church a long time ago. Someone was 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 living with their girlfriend before they got married, and someone came to me and said, "What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it?" And I'm thinking, like, "What are you going to do about your attitude, mate? Because you are being really judgmental. That is not a good thing. That is not good. We need to extend grace as grace has been." dealt to us yes we will when we become aware of a situation we will deal with it but it was none of that bloke's business saying about the situation we were dealing with it in our own way uh rest assured because that's what we want to do but we want to deal with things in a loving way jesus when he with the the woman was caught in adultery he was very gracious how he dealt with her he could have said you're not gonna let me out. but he didn't he dealt with it in a really gracious way God deals with us in a gracious way. He extends grace to us and he gives us his Holy Spirit. Praise God for that. Listen, I hope you have a great day today. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you again tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.